Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new Let's Check Out video. My name is Siperos and this is Skald, against the Black Priory, and uh, the Prologue to be more specific. Uh, let me go to the uh, options here real quick. Audio... Let's lower it to 20... 20%, yeah, okay, there we go. So, I haven't done one of these videos for a long time, so I thought I would make one now about this gem. So, Skald is a Kickstarter game being developed by Scape ETAS, I think that's how to say it, and published by Raw Fury. The prologue that I'm playing here is free to play on Steam, so you can go and try this one out yourself too. No official release dates for the full game has been announced yet, as far as I know. So what kind of game is Skald? It's a classic turn-based CRPG set in a dark and gritty fantasy universe full of tragic heroes, violent deaths, and eldritch Lovecraftian horror. Skald is inspired by the legendary titles such as Ultima, Wasteland, and the Gold Box Dungeons and Dragons series from the late 80s and early 90s, even going as far as replicating the pixel graphics aesthetics of the time. I have actually been interested in old CRPGs like those recently, and I'm even planning to play one on this channel in the future, maybe even two, but we'll see. So when I saw this, I got intrigued. I have played this game already a little bit for about a half an hour, just to test the waters and the controls. Plus I died, so that also stopped me from playing more. Let's see if I can get further this time, so without further ado, let's check out Skald. So let's create our character. We could start with the quick start here and just jump into the game, but let me show you what the character creation is like. Alright, so we have only four classes here so far, and as they say here, note, classes, feats and spells are not fully implemented and must be considered placeholders for the final game. Alright, understood. So, clerics offer close range support to their party through area-based buffs and healing, yes, your basic cleric. Then we got magos, not mages, magos. Magi are ranged strikers that can cast powerful destructive ranged spells, so your typical mage. And rogue. A versatile character who combines important non-combat skills with a large damage output against single targets. Yeah, sounds very familiar. Good old rogue and warrior. A frontline fighter that can take and deal a large amounts of damage. I'm thinking about going with warrior just for the sake of this video, even though I would normally be more interested in a rogue or cleric. But for the sake of this video, let's just uh, go with the warrior. So select the warrior. And then, uh, stats. Distribute 25 points among your stats. Double click on a stat to the left to add points, or click right to subtract. Alright. So strength is obviously our most strength, and is it fortitude? Uh, let's check what all these stats do. Strength. A measure of a character's uh, brawn and physical power. Yes, I thought so. Uh, agility. A measure of hand-eye coordination, nimbleness and de dexterity. Fortitude. Describes how tough and resilient a character is. Yeah, I thought so. Intellect. Mental acuity. Recall and analytical skill. Doesn't say anything about increasing your uh, the damage of your spells or anything like that. And presence. A character's ability to read and react to the surrounding environment and people. Yeah. Okay, so so stat and fortitude are, 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 are the most important stats here, I would imagine. So let's... And we got... How many do we have? 25 points that we can distribute, okay. Let's increase this to 18. And this to... Mm, let's see, uh, 16 and 16. Uh, to strength and fortitude, sounds good to me. Maybe also a, a, a few points to agility, so we can actually hit our enemies. Presence, sure. Mm, so, so presence is basically like charisma, almost. Let's dump the rest to agility. I don't really care care, care much for the in intellect here, not for not for a warrior anyway. Okay, and continue. And then we can select our gender. We could go for female or male. The character gender is purely cosmetic. Okay. And then we can and then we can customize our character over here. This small pixelated uh, character over here. You can barely see the difference when I switch the skin color, while well, the hair color change is more obvious. 
And then we have the main color and the secondary color. That's the color of the pants, apparently. And then we then we can switch portraits. There's three male portraits, portraits and two female portraits, by the looks of it. You know, I kind of feel like feel like you know, going for a female here because I don't I don't kind of like these male portraits here at all. The female ones look more interesting to me. She looks rather badass. She looks like a barbarian. She's not bad either. Hmm. Let's go with her. Okay, so let's try to... Okay, so light skin. And then... Blonde, ha uh, blonde hair. Main color. Well, she's wearing, wearing a green shirt. So let's give her a green shirt. As for the secondary color... Doesn't matter too much, I guess, but... Hmm, they don't have red. Oh wait, they have red, but it's not... I was I, I was looking here, and not to the text here. Okay, well, let's give her red pants. Oh, uh, oh, and there's hair color as well. I didn't almost not... I didn't notice because there was no text here in the between. Okay, so... That's quite close. That could also work, but it also looks kind of silly to me. Hmm, not bad. A bob, that could work, work as well. Undercut. Some of the hairstyles here are not named, apparently. I guess we just go with the short one here. Alright, then continue. You must choose a name for your character before venturing forward. Yes, ob ob obviously. So, a good female name. How about... Leo Hilde. Hmm, I like that name. Leo Hilde. Let's go with that. Now, Venture Ford. On the dark, raging seas of the outer islands, a lone caravel struggles against the winds and waves. The moan of cracking timbers, the tang of preserved fish, your eyes slowly adjust to the darkness of the dimly lit ship's hold. We could skip the intro, but uh, let's just let's just go through the yeah uh, through the intro. Suddenly, something strikes the hull and the ship rocks violently. Your heart begins to pound, and a feeling of unease grows in your stomach. Rise, well rested and ready to go. Get up, mouth dry and head pounding. Rouse yourself from deep meditation. Well, uh, rise, well rested. You get to your feet and become aware of agitated voices sh and shouting up on deck. Something is not right. You should make your way up top and get a bearing on the situation. Okay, be on, your, be on our way. So we can... I can use the uh, WASD's keys or just click. Now you set up a pile of hay and an empty bottle, bottle of spirits. So booze, okay. And there's a chest here. A sturdy wooden chest. Okay, so we have a dagger. Uh, it's a fighting knife. It's a uh, its blade is usually less than one foot long and can be curved or straight with one edge or two. Pick it up, and we have health health tonic, a small vial of reddish liquid. It restores a small amount of light damage when consumed. Okay, so it's a health potion. Oh, there, there was two leather armor. Is made up of multiple overlapping pieces of leather, boiled to increase their natural toughness, and the, and then deliberately stitched together. Okay. There we go. We got we got some better gear. Now, how do I access my inventory? I guess here. Okay. Okay. We are wearing that. Take the sword, and we have some a pile of gold. Doesn't say how much exactly. Hmm. I guess I'm, I just keep the potions in these inventories here. Okay. To your surprise, you realize that this door has been locked from the outside. It doesn't budge. Perhaps you could slip the lock with a thin blade. If you have not already done so, you must equip your dagger. Leave and press E to manage your equipment. Mm, okay, so it's E. So use dagger. Strength. Mm, 20 plus. Try breaking down the door. 
You slam painfully into the door, but it doesn't budge. Okay, I didn't inv I didn't invest enough strength up to this character apparently. I should have had 20 or more. Okay, well use the dagger then, like a rogue. You slip the dagger through a gap in the door and lift the bar that was locking you in. The door begins to creak open. You gain 100 XP. As the door swings open, you can now clearly make out cries from the deck above. You should make haste. Alright. Battle erupts. Press return on your uh, on, on your turn to auto-resolve combat. Okay. Okay, they missed. Okay, Leo Hilt is armed with dagger and has a 63% chance to hit and deal 5 to 6 damage. Zero soak, whatever that means. So we are so we are fighting a rapid rat. With only 6 HP, it should be easy to kill it. Especially when, when we do a critical hit, okay. That's great. That rat is alerted. Okay. They are coming to us, but... Hmm. Didn't quite kill it. Ouch! It hit me! You have defeated your enemies. Each party member gained 140 XP. There is loot on the ground. There is loot on the ground. Rat tail, times two. Loot all and leave. Sure. Is that a unlit torch? Yeah, we can lit the torches. Just wondering if there's any uh, other chests or something around here. Another torch? Yes. Okay, well, let's go. You emerge on the ship's lower deck. As your eyes adjust to the darkness, you become aware of a hulking figure standing in the shadows. Leohild, there you are, at last, growls a rough voice. Who's there? Show yourself. Freeze and listen carefully. Launch at the figure. Uh, let's not be hasty. Who's there? It's Roland. Where the tides have you been? Why are you skulking around? Below decks, planning, planning our landing. Why? Mind your own fucking business, what's going on? Below decks, planning our landing. Why? The island is in sight, but the damn guilders refuse to land. They want to turn back. If we turn back, we'll lose our shot at the girl. Did they say why? Only superstitious bilge. They claim they saw something in the water. Either way, our boys are about to uh, uh, show them some very real steel. If we can't land, we lose our chance. Uh, we lose our shot at the girl. I knew I would regret chartering a gilder ship. If we can't land, we lose our shot at the girl. And no one gets paid. Listen here, I know our boys better than most. We have hired them to go to Itra and kill. If we don't pay them, things will go bad quickly. But the sailors are bloody terrified. They claim something is hunting us. Let's go for all the good it will do. Wait here, Roland. Uh, no, you come with us. Wait, there's a few sailors up ahead. Rattle as a pair of rabbits. We're not here to make friends, if that's what you're suggesting. We stay way past them. Well, we're not here to make friends. Spill sailor blood and the guild will want to make you pay. Take the left door ahead and spare us some trouble and a pay cut. Perhaps anything else you feel compelling to tell me? Let's just get off this bloody boat. Alright. You and Roland begin making your way towards the commotion on the deck. Press Q or press the character portrait to, to swap the party leader. Okay, so it works like that. Roland is now leading the party, but let's continue with Leo Hilde. Did he say left door? I think he said left. Yeah, they cannot see us. Cool. I think there's a chest over there. Is that guy following our footsteps? I guess he was. What do we have here? Hmm. That's a maze. A maze is made out of an ornate spiked metal. Head attached to a simple wooden or metal shaft. Doesn't seem to be any more powerful than the dagger as far as the 
damage it can do. But we're gonna take it. And Battle of Strong Spirits? Of course we're gonna take it. Okay. Now, where am I supposed to... Oh, shit. The sailor grabs at you, wild-eyed. Dead emperors, it's coming for us. It whispers to me. Get away from me. Diplomacy versus 10. Calm yourself, you're a killed sailor. Half insane with terror, the sailor screams and launches at you. Oh, great. Now we are flanked, too. Okay, so... We just, we just attack, continue, ouch. He's attacking Roland. Damn, Roland. You have to defeat, defeat your enemies, we gain 37 XP, and also a club. Okay, where is the ladders or whatnot that I need to... Also, is there something here? Ah, it's empty. Is, isn't there some ladders or... Oh, I should have used this. There we go. At least we killed only one of them and not both of them. You emerge onto the deck and you see two groups of men facing each other with weapons drawn. The ship shakes violently in the grip of a storm as lightning tears across the sky. Amidst the din of the storm and their frantic arguments, you bellow for the attention of the assembled crewmen and mercenaries. Both the ship's captain and the leader of the mercenaries you hired, a coarse thug of a man named Estavo, turn their attention to you. They look ready to use the unsheathed weapons in their hands at the slightest provocation. Address the ship's captain. Address the mercenary leader. Hmm. Address the ship's captain. You direct your attention to the ship's captain. You know him to be a reasonable but suggestible man. At present, his usually placid eyes are wild with panic or anger. I paid you for passage to the shore, did I not? Why have we not dropped anchor? Yeah. Something dire stalks these shores. We cannot approach without risking the ire of that horror. A jittery mutter of agreement rises from the sailors, causing Estavo's eyes to darken even further. What horror? What have you seen? Captain, take us closer or there will be consequences. Well, what horror? Not but glimpses. My men have seen the shadow of something deep in water, stalking us. Nothing natural moves like that. Estavo glares murderously at the captain. You renate on our deal based on a glimpse? Foolish superstition, take us in, now. Estavo, do as you wish. Hmm. You renege on our deal based on a glimpse? There is desperation in the captain's voice. We are seasoned sailors, we do not balk at shadows. You need to be alive to rescue this girl you speak of. We are out of time, sail us in or argue the point with Estavo. You speak sense, perhaps it is better to turn around. Oh uh, no. Estavo, have at it. We are out of time. Sail us in, or argue the point with Estavo. Estavo turns his steely gaze from you to the captain. Let me spell this out for you, Sea Dog. We contracted to rescue the girl, but if you don't get us to the shore, we'll cut you for free. The mercenaries who hired all shift their weight in anticipation of making good on that promise. Captain, he's right. Do what you, do what you were hired to do. Estavo convinced the man. Yeah, Captain, he's right. Do what you were hired to do. Something changes in the Captain's expression. He stands tall. I will not order my ship and my men to certain doom. We shall not get any closer to the coast while I have command. I'm sorry, Captain. You leave us no choice. I defer to your judgment, Captain. Estavo, stand down. Diplomacy. I believe you, but my contract with these men does not mention your survival. Yeah, let's try to convince him one last time. Estavo's grin begins to show teeth as he hears your words. The color drains from the captain's face. There's a moment's silence, and then a crash and a shudder as something strikes the ship's hull. In the confusion, a mercenary throwing tacker flies, lodging in the sailor's throat. Well, I guess we have to fight the crew. Battle erupts. Yes. Okay, so I'm... There, okay. 
Oh wait, never, never mind. I was controlling Roland there. Hmm. Kill him. It's kind of hard to tell that 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 who are that who are the mercenaries. Which one of these guys are, are on our side? Anyway. Now he's coming at me. Okay, uh... Ouch. Damn. Nice crits. Well, he's not getting any action. I thought I could move from there uh, to the more to the right from here, but apparently not. My path is blocked. I'm just a sitting duck here, and I missed. Of course I did. And now they're about to steal my kill. Uh, can you cast any spells? No. Use feet. What feats do you have? Expert slashing weapons. Critical hits with slashing weapons now cause bleeding. It's passive though. Defend, inventory, hold action. Let's hold action. And we don't have any spells either, I take it. Nope. Uh, feet. Same as Roland's. Okay. Maybe I should have taken an another uh, class after all if Roland. Is our fighter here. Ah, whatever. You have defeated your enemies. Each party member gained 110 XP. There is loot on the ground, two clubs and daggers. Well, take them all. We are done here, right? You rest your sword arm and survey the carnage. Then suddenly a loud crash as something collides violently with the hull. Surviving mercenaries and crewmen alike fight to keep their food in as the ship lurches. Oh my god, it's Cthulhu. Suddenly, huge monstrous tentacles burst from the water around the ship. For a split second before the terror sets in, you wonder what Estavo must be thinking as the monstrosities loom over him. After reaching their full height, the tentacles curve inwards and smash into the ship. Some pierce straight through the deck. Others snap the masts like they were matchsticks. You stand frozen in place. Through a haze of splintered wood and panic screams, you notice Roland. He throws himself out of the way of a tentacle, but begins to fall overboard as the ship lurches once more. Go to Roland's aid. You dash towards the ship's fractured rail, touching holes in the deck and wounded men, beseeching you for help. Roland hangs by one arm from the side of the ship. Try to grab him. You lunge for Roland's arm, but he loses his grip and your fingers close only around thin air. You missed him by an inch. He falls wordlessly downwards. Well, shit. You watch as he is swallowed by the raging sea. The ship is listing fatally, and you see the great tentacles high above you, poised for the Coptic race. Abandoned ship. As you jump, you hear the terrible rending of wood giving in to flesh. The impact of the water wins you. The waves pummel you down. The currents besiege you to go deeper, even deeper to peaceful blackness. And we sink. And that's the end of the prologue, folks. We just sink and die here. Nah, I'm kidding. It, it won't end here. But I really do like this pixel art style. The old school CRPGs and the gold box series of the late 80s and early 90s had their own unique charm. That this game is obviously trying to repli replicate and so far it's doing a very, very good job at it. Hmm, am I supposed to click here or... Okay, there we go. Okay, we are at... This font is quite hard to read. The... Bera... The... Berin Estate? I don't know, That's, that font is hard to read. Oh, and by the way, can I... I noticed that there's this cool little option here. Video, CRT, 
on. No, no, this is very old school right here. Let's play like this for a little while at least. The villa of Lord Cato Perrin. Okay, so I did read it correctly. Two weeks earlier. So this is a flashback. An aging armored man in the in the livery of House Perrin stands and scowls at you. Eyes like coal peer out from a cracky face, fringed top and bottom with wild white hair. Return his challenging uh, Return his challenging stare, of course. The older man crosses his massive arm, steps forward and leans toward you. So, young sellsword, come looking for a scrap, have you? Though his voice is full of gravel, there is now a glint in his eyes, as though the old coals have begun to warm up. Caden, you old fool. Stand aside, old man, I have business with your lord. So we know this guy. Caden, you old fool. A single bark of laughter uh, emanates from the dense beard as he embraces you in a crushing bear hug. Kidian, Caden, however you spell that, Caden may be older and grayer, but from the force of his hug, you don't reckon you would have any more chance of beating him now than you did as a 12-year-old. Go easy, old boar. It's good to see some things haven't changed. Caden steps back and allows you to breathe again before grabbing you by the shoulders. We heard of your father's passing. Truly, he sits with the golden dead now. Tell me, how did he die? In glorious battle at my at my side. Drunk and reeking of his own piss. Let's not dwell on all the wounds. Do you know why I'm here? Well, in a glorious battle. Caden's eyes narrow. Then the old warrior died a fitting death. Caden is quiet for a moment, then breaks into a grin. We'll raise a cup to his name together, you and I. Soon as you are done with Kato, and I can and I can rustle up some ale fit for a guest. Caden, why am I here? Master Cato will chew your ear plenty when you see him, Leo Hilt. Lyra, the new master at arms, awaits you by the main entrance. She'll escort you, and don't ask her not to, if you think I had a temper. The joke fails to hide the note of anxiety in the grizzled house guard's voice. I shall look for this, Lyra. Diplomacy 15 plus. What are you hiding from me, old bear? Hmm. Well, I shall look for this Lyra. If you want to explore uh, for old time's sake, take this lantern. Kato will wait, and we don't want you getting lost in the hedge maze again. The man laughs heartily and hands you a small brass lantern. Activate or deactivate lanterns by pressing T. Alright. Whatever may come to pass, it did this old warrior a barrel of good to see you again, boy. Boy, we are a woman. Well, maybe the developer has yet to make any sort of changes to the text here to address our character as female. So, whatever. But then again, our female character looks looks very tomboyish. So, well, anyway. The old man slaps you on the shoulder in parting, almost knocking you off balance. Leave. Okay, so... It was T. Well, there's not really much of a difference when I use it here. Maybe it's daytime, actually. It's Even though it looks like it's nighttime to me. You stand before the gate to the hedge maze. It stirs old feelings of both dread and elation. The sounds and smells of the estate grounds, uh, as they were long ago, call to you from distant memory. You feel you could easily plunge into, the, into their depths. Let yourself go and remember. Sure. Which daydream is it this time? Are you valiantly defending uh, me from rebels again? Embla throws a pine cone at you, snapping you from your reverie. She's ten years old, and you are a year and you are a year her senior. Let's play hide and seek in the maze. I'll hide. You faintly hear someone yell her name from the distance. You better run, star child. Snap out of the memory. Uh, let's snap out of the memory. Let's not dwell too much into this. How about if we use the... The lantern doesn't make much of a difference. Well, let's not go to the maze. Let's not, let's not spend too much time there. Was there, is there something there? A guardsman, uh, dressed in the livery of the noble house baron. The guard scowls somewhat at you. Somewhat at you. 
Lyra is waiting for you just outside the main entrance. She'll take you to the Lord Cat in Kato. Kato. Trade slash steal uh, or attack. No, let's just leave. Switch the lantern away. Oh. Okay, it does make a difference now. They didn't make so earlier. Okay. Uh, it must be her. A woman stands before the main entrance of the villa. Her pastor speaks of a graceful coiled power, that of a dueling ace. No doubt she is the new master at arms for House Baron. As you approach, she offers a quick neat bow, just low enough to be respectful. Greetings, Leohild. Master Cato welcomes you back to House Baron. He awaits you in his offices, but he gracefully gives you leave to tour the grounds for the estate before meeting with him. He seemed to think you would want to. Let us get this over with. Why have I been summoned? The grounds? Why? I think I will look around a bit first. Very well, I will wait for you here. She offers another short bow. Leave. Okay, well... What about over here? Another guardsman. A gate, okay. You enter the kitchen and... And a pair of scullions offer a hurried bow. It's all so much quieter, empty and gloomier than you remember. Of course, old Magda is no longer where she used to be, sitting by the oven, kind, red-faced and tending a shank of lamb. Reminisce? You remember the matronly woman as she sat, humming to herself, pouring fat over the roasting meat. Child, come here, will you? Magda was always a beacon of kindness in a childhood where such qualities were few and far between. Go to Magda. Magda claps you gently with her tubby hand. Have you eaten yet? Before you can answer, she produces a small bundle of treats from her apron and hand hands it to you. As son to the master at arms for the great house baron, you did not go wanting, materially at least. Thank you. Magda looks at you with kind eyes as you pick, as you pick at the bundle. He's here again, down in the cellar. He's not so good, my child. Sleeping now, but it would be best if you got him to bed before his men see him like this again. The nut in your stomach is as real now as it was when you were twelve. I'll go get him. Don't worry, he won't make a fuss. He just needs time. You know, Leo Hild. Deep wounds take a long while to heal. The old woman turns back to her meat and resumed her meandering humming. So our father was an alcoholic. Something... Uh, maybe just something terrible happened. Like maybe maybe his wife and our mother uh, and our mother died and he was just coping with it. Or something like that. Okay, I think we have been looking around enough. Oh, I didn't want to talk to you. Leave. Get rid of the... Lantern. Alright. There you are. Is your nostalgia appeased? Shall we attend to Master Kato? Yes, let's go to see Kato. Very well. If it pleases you, the Master is in his office just ahead. Yes, I remember the way. I would prefer to go alone. Nah, let's just go with her. I suppose you do, but I'll escort you nonetheless. A flicker of a smile plays across her face and she beckons for you to lead the way. Okay, so she's now in our party, momentarily. The opulence is faded, the shadows longer. Clearly much has changed since the last time you were here. Try to remember how long it's been. Nah, uh, let's not. Let's just move on. Over here, I take it. Now uh, why can't we go there? Okay, fine. Flanking the doorway are two marble statues. The craftsmanship is stunning. But the sight of the two women depicted fills you with sadness. Well, let's just uh, continue. Is that a pool? A reflecting pool with a perfectly still surface. For some reason it fills you with dread. I wonder why. Uh, over here. There we go. Kato Perrin sits tall in a tasteful but modest reception room. He looks less imposing than you remember and with a few more crow's feet. Whatever that means. 
Nonetheless, he is lost none of his composure or air of casual authority. You take a seat across a formidable desk from him. This sturdy, like the rest of the villa, is half-lit, giving a morose cast to its opulence. The older man's face creases into a tired but genuine smile, which momentarily lifts some of the room's oppressive mood. It's a mercy to see you again. Your own man and in your prime. Again we are a woman, goddammit, Kato says before a frown consumes his smile. It's just a shame our reunion is overshadowed by the fates of those we love. But perhaps together, we can yet improve our collective circumstances. Why have you summoned me? So you know my father is dead? Kato leans forward, hands claps beneath his chin. I shan't deny it. I was saddened to hear of his passing. Despite everything, I remember him fondly. You drove him to drink and mercenary work. No need to dwell on the past. Kato is caught off guard for a moment, before letting out a deep breath. Then the years have bestowed you with wisdom. I am glad, for it has forsaken the house of Baron. Why have you called me here? Empla is missing. Kato's voice quivers momentarily, betraying his stoic features. Now I beg of you, Leo Hilt. Help me find my daughter. Help her return home, where she belongs. What happened to her? She left without notice, a week ago. From the scant clues we had, we believe she boarded a ship bound for one of the outer islands, Itra. She went off her own free will. At the time I thought little of it. Kato begins to clover. Since then, however, there have been reports, grave ones. Reports? No one, and no word has left Itra in days. Rumor has it even the Imperial Augurs are in the dark. I know not how this touches the fate of my daughter, but she must be returned to me, one way or another. Any idea why she left? Something has been building in her for years. An aptitude of sorts, but I suspect you already knew. In any case, it's grown much stronger lately and drives her in ways I cannot understand. I suspect she is looking for answers. Hmm, an aptitude? An aptitude of the worst kind. It does not spring from a canonical imperial praxis. Instead, it comes from elsewhere. It is the kind the Empire does not suffer to exist. I hope it's only answers that she seeks. But why Idra? Why indeed? There is little on the island save the port of Horin. If Idra was her destination, she must have landed there. Hmm. So, what can I do? Hire mercenaries. Travel to Idra and begin your search in the port of Horin. From there, I trust you to do what needs to be done. Spare no cost, just bring back my daughter. Mercenaries? Yes, if nothing else, the port will be dangerous enough. I recommend you begin by seeking out Roland Greyeye. Oh, that's the guy who helped us earlier uh, in the battle and joined our party momentarily. And then he uh, fell to the sea. A crude but effective cell sword that I have made good use of before. Roland Greyeye? The man is a grizzled veteran. He may have slowed with age, but his experience and reliability more than make up for it. He is also much respected by similar men, and so will be instrumental in hiring a reliable crew. I'll take it into consideration. Kato shows you his upturned palms, beseeching. I know this thing I ask of you is fraught with danger, but this is your chance at improving your fortune, materially and in honor. What say you? I accept for Embla's sake. Very well, for my family's name. I'll do it, for the gold. What makes you think I care? Very well, for my family's name. Kato smiles softly, visibly relieved, and for a moment he looks like the man you remember. Have you any final questions or matters to discuss? Time is, as I'm sure you appreciate, of the essence. Let's just get on with it. Kato stands with poorly concealed effort. You stand and meet his case. Return her to me. There is no other outcome of this affair. Shake his hand and leave. Remain silent. Well, let's shake his hand. You are awoken by the cacophonous cries of gulls circling you. Your body is a mess of pain and exhaustion, covered in a thousand cuts and scrapes. Slowly you drag yourself from the cold water onto the relative safety of solid rock. Moments or hours pass as you lay still, 
trying desperately to will some warmth back into your body. Finally you manage to force your eyes open. By some miracle you are not only alive, but you find yourself on the shores of the cursed island of Idra. Strewn around you is the wreckage of the Zephyr, that must be the ship. You see no other survivors. Nonetheless, the goal ahead of you is clear. You must venture to rescue your childhood friend from whatever fate has befallen her. Though unless you can find equipment and companions soon, you may have cheated death in vain. Venture forward. Okay, so, um... Our inventory. Well, we have a club. That's something. What's this? Uh, it's a... Oh, it's a pile of gold. Okay. I, don't, I, thought, I thought it was something else. There's a lighthouse here. An ancient lighthouse raises steeply from the bluffs ahead of you. The beacon is still lit, though it flickers weakly. Enter it. I haven't been here, so I don't know what, what's ahead of me. Who are you? One of the fortunate few sailors to survive the sinking of the Zephyr is crouching like a frightened rabbit in the tall grass. Please don't kill me, I've only barely made it past those blasted hounds, and I just want to live. Hounds? Aye, bloody monsters they are. Uh, look all deceased and rabid. I was trying to make my way up to the lighthouse past the stairs just north of here, but there's a whole pack of them there. Okay, doesn't sound very good. Might want to look for another route, uh, route up there, least you end up, uh, least you end up as dog shit. Okay. Well, I don't want to fight rapid dogs. Let's look around some more. Battle erupts. Oh, what did I run into? Oh, great. Hmm. Defend. And uh, attack again. There we go. Hound ear. Why do we want to pick up hound ears? Well, we are gonna pick it up anyway because it's an it's a RPG. You pick up everything you can. Hmm, interesting. Skeleton remains. What do we have here? Leather armor. Nice. And some potions. Put this on. Can't go further there. I wonder if Roland has survived. Huh, another... Oh, battle erupts. What, what are we fighting now? Nah, just crabs. Let's not go to the water. I don't know if... I don't know if, if being in water makes us Slower or weaker or something. Hmm, they are still not dead. Ouch, great. Okay, that's dead. Damn. There we go. And we got 257 XP from that. And we got... Chitins. I don't know exactly what those are, but we're gonna pick them up anyway. What do we have here? Ration. A trail ration. This can be eaten when the party re rests in a camp. Oh, okay, nice. There's more stuff here. Uh, Dacker. Okay. I don't know if that's more powerful than our club, but let's see. Uh, Okay, so club deals 1 to 3 damage, this deals 1 to 2. Piercing. Okay, so it's, so it's not so it's not that much better. Let's just use the club. Oh, there's a treasure chest. Okay, bastard sword. Now we are talking. The bastard sword the bastard sword is a the bastard sword is four feet long and may be wielded one-handed or two-handed. Okay. And jewelry. Some jewelry that can be sold for a few coins, alright, and some spirits. 
now we are talking. I didn't find a bastard sword the first time I was playing. Uh, he. So can I decide? Can I decide if I? Uh, can I decide if I use this uh, as a one-handed or two-handed weapon? Or maybe she's using it as a two-handed weapon automatically, as as long as we're not using a shield as well. I think so. I don't see any other options to use it as a one-handed or two-handed. But hey, good thing that we came here. But I don't dare to go and fight more dogs alone. So let's just go back and see where else we can go. Shame that we couldn't recruit him. And one of the wretched survivors from the Sephir. Talk, trade, steal. Uh, trade, steal. Well, he got nothing on him. Okay, let's just leave. He's no, he's no use. Let's move the mouse away. Do you want to leave the current area? Yes. Let's just follow the road. Oh. You see a figure trashed in violently at something obscured by the low fog. Whatever this person is doing, it's producing loud crunching, wet squelches and a, and a stream of curses. Move closer. You see the scene for what it is. Roland. Oh fuck yes, he's alive. Roland, soaked through and and spattered with ichor, is laying waste to a number of grotesque looking creatures with a with a piece of driftwood. He snarls like a wounded beast and his eyes are black with rage. As the last of the horrid beasts falls, twitching back into the shallows, Roland snaps his gaze to you, dead eyes staring at some distant point on the horizon behind you. Eventually the tension drains from his muscles, and he lowers his makeshift weapon. Thought I was carrion, they did. I nearly was. I didn't think you would make it. Seems I've got a few lives left in me, for all they are worth. Roland sighs deeply and slumps down onto a nearby rock. You tried to save me, you bloody idiot. Not exactly the thanks I was expecting. There's no room for being a bloody hero in work like this. It's just shit, blood and bad men doing worse things to others. He looks around at the driftwood and chunks of flesh, popping at your ankles. It's about time I paid my debts. And yet here we are. You sound like you didn't want to be saved. Roland looks out across the uncaring sea. Not many get to be my age in our line of work. The things that I have seen, that I have done. Memories like that prey upon you. Like bloody wolves circling a camp. With the fire dying out, second you let your guard down, they pounce. Your time isn't over yet, old man. Why don't you retire? So would you rather I would let you die? Well, your time isn't over yet, old man. As you say. But heed this. If you want to survive, you need to drop the bloody heroics. This business makes your hands dirty, and nothing gets them clean again. Speaking of which, I suppose I still work for you. We should get going. I'm counting on you. Let's get going. Roland nods solemnly, brushes a stickly cup of ichor off his arm, and trudges over to you. His lips part as if to speak, but he hesitates. Let us go. Roland does not seem to hear you. Instead, he is staring intently ahead. There are men in the fog. I thought I heard them earlier. I'm certain they are not from the Zephyr, and I would wager they are less than friendly. I don't care if you're itching for a fight or not, but either way, we should tread carefully. Alright, good to hear. Oh, are those the men? Straining to see through the dense fog, you finally spot them. A group of men prowling the shoreline like carrion eaters looking for dead flesh. They are unkept and dressed in rags with bare torsos and broad shoulders, adorned by a strange mixture of sailor's tattoos and crude symbols. They carry an assortment of cruel-looking, rusted tools turned to weapons. Chippering chatter, laughter and whimpering drifts across the fog in a steady stream. Whomever these men are, their minds are long gone. You sit still until a group of them passes you by. If you wish, you might be able to slip past them. Okay, well... The following characters have leveled up. Leo Hilt, level 2, plus 8 health and plus 10 uh, CP. What is that? Mm, I don't know. By feats? Let's see. So, 
Do we use the CPs to buy these feats? Backstab? Any successful attack against defenseless flanked stunt or surprised opponent scores an auto automatical critical hit? That's a well that's a rogue kind of feat right there. Defensive stance. You make an attack at half damage and at minus six attack bonus, but gain plus four to dodge until your next round. Expert blunt. Piercing. Critical hits with piercing weapons now cause bleeding. Increase strength. Permanently increases strength by four. Mighty strike. You make a melee attack that does double the damage, but at minus 10 attack bonus. And toughness, you gain 10 extra hit points. Well, let's get increased strength. Oh, there's more. Oh, never mind, there isn't. Oh, okay, CP cost 10. These all cost 10, by the looks of it. And these are... I can't buy these because I don't have the stats for them, I don't think. Okay. Buy that. Okay, so I guess we are done here. Uh, where are we? I think they are... Is that one of the... The lunatics that we saw, or is it, or is it someone else? A random villager. Okay, I guess they are the luna lunatics. Okay. Hmm. Ah, we can leave here. Okay, um. Uh, just defend for now. Defend. Defend. Let them let him come to us. There we go and one dagger, Traveler's Scarp. Okay. Do you have anything on you, by the way? My inventory. Yeah, it's okay. He got arm armor as well and a bastard sword by the looks of it. Okay. Let's switch our party leader to Leo Hild. Do you want to leave? Yes. Oh, great. You have been... Way, you have been way late by reavers. Attack, flee, sneak away. You failed to sneak away from your opponents. Combat erupts. God damn it. If only I was a rogue. Hmm. Roland got more health, so we're gonna charge with him. Oh wait, we start with... We start with her. Okay. Move her here. Defend. This might be a bad idea to attack alone like this, but we're gonna try it anyway. Like that. Only one. Hmm. Didn't die, but now he is. Now he's super dead. 233 XP. Got some daggers, traveler scarves, and short sword. Okay, load everything and leave. Switch characters again. Yes, leave. Hmm. What is this? Before you, the unmistakable mess, squalor, and desperation of a refugee camp sprawls around a small farmstead like a festering wound. Well, let's enter. Also, let's, uh... Let's go back to this for now. I actually kind of like the... CRT monitor look better. What do you guys think? Can we get in? Yes, we can apparently. Entering the racked camp, you notice a small crowd nearby, arranged in an inward looking ring. No, she looks cool. In the center stands a formidable armored woman. She carries an unmistakable air of authority, and the insignia on her armor marks her as a cleric of the Imperial Death Cults. Imperial Death Cults, huh? And she's a cleric. Sounds like someone we want to our party. The tattered band of refugees surrounding her are agitated and shouting over one another. But there are so few of us. Horin was home to 200 and we are but a few score left. Cries a ragged man with tears in his eyes. By the golden corpses there must be survivors. Besieges another. And who are we to send? 
half of us won't live through next market day, and the other half ain't fit to hold so much as a stick. An old crone interjects, panic quivering in her voice. The crowd erupts in a cacophony of desperate appeals. The cleric raises her arms, and the crowd falls silent. Her sonorous voice rings out. We may indeed be cursed, but Aldon is right. There may yet be survivors in Horon, and it's my duty to go to their aid, or at least to learn what fate befell them. The assembly erupts again, some blessing the cleric in tears of hope, others climbing into her robes while pleading for her not to risk her life. Through the crowd, the woman catches sight of you and nods curtly. She turns around and begins to load up on supplies, no doubt intent on making good on her promise to the panicked refugees. Okay, I think we should talk to her. Where is she? Also, is there a healer nearby? I racked hungry ref refuge from Horin. Mm, talk. What's happening to us? It feels like the world itself is ending. Any rumors? They say smugglers use the caves in the mountains of the west. Maybe they have food. Okay, that. let's keep that in mind. Is this a cleric? Yes, it is. The imposing cleric holds up a palm in greeting. Welcome to our new home, stranger. The people of this land know me as Drina. I serve the Golden Dead, and this camp, these people, are under my protection. What brings you here? I was heading to Horin. Drina nods and smiles to a passing refugee before leaning in close to you and asking in a low voice, And what business did you have in Horin? We lost our supplies, I had hoped to restock. I had hoped to recruit new sword arms. I was looking for someone. Here on Idra? That may prove to be a difficult task given the tempest that's engulfed this island. How so? She leans back, her eyes still flinty. Are you not aware of the situation here? These people say the island is surely doomed. Her eyes pour into you, gauging your reaction. What has happened? And what say you? I couldn't care less for your troubles. Mm, and what say you? There is always hope, in this life or beyond it. However, I have seen things these days that I cannot readily explain or reconcile with my fate. Our graveyards have been overflowing as of late with stranger killing stranger for no good reason. And worse, I think brother and brother, husband and wife, it's become a tide of ruin. I implored the governor to intervene and investigate, but as usual he did nothing but cover in his villa and peer over his walls. The governor? A drunken buffoon in my estimation. He did not deserve to die, however, and I don't think he made it out of Horen. Marcus, his chamberlain, did, however. I suppose he's the closest we are to a leader at the moment, though he may wish it were not so. I see, what happened next? Then, a few nights ago, pandemonium erupted. Bands of armed men and women roamed the town, hacking down anyone they came across. Some folks claim those that did not die on the spot were dragged away to suffer some unknown fate. Maybe crazed cultists? Continue. My order and I joined what saying guardsmen remained in the chaos and tried to stem the tide, but we were driven from the city in the panicked exodus that followed. We considered retaking the town, but we had scores of wounded, so we retreated, better to save the lives not yet lost. We set up this camp to regroup and to care for the wounded, but a shadow hangs over us. The wounded do not recover, and those still on their feet slowly lose their mind or hearts. What do you intend to do now? We need answers, Trina gestures at the refugees languishing in the camp before continuing, and it's my duty to seek them out, if they exist. My road goes first to Horin, and then somewhere darker, I fear. Are you planning to go alone? Why not wait for reinforcements? I cannot for this fool's errand. Well, are you planning to go alone? If I must, doomed or not, it's all dust in the end and I intend to die in armor. But, from what I can tell, we must both tread the same terrible path. Though our reasons may differ, surely there is safety to be had in numbers. Indeed, let's join forces. Excellent. Drina's face lights for an instant. These people, my people, I feel their pain, and we will mourn together later. For now, they deserve answers, and by the Emperor's bones I will get them some. We make for Horan. I have some questions first. Let's see what do we have here. Hmm. 
ask Drina about Embla. Is it Drina or Drina? Drina fidgets with a heavy looking ring on her finger while she listens to your description of Embla. She is certainly not in the camp, and I can't say I remember seeing her in Horen, but perhaps that bodes well for your quest. How so? One of the primary tasks of my order is to care for the dead, and I can say with certainty that I didn't lay to rest anyone matching her description before the fall of Horen. Do you have any suggestions where to look? Beyond traveling to Horen, you may want to ask around here in, in camp. A few of the merchants survived, perhaps she visited one during her stay. I see, I have I had some other questions. Let's see. Hmm. Who do you think attacked Horen? The reavers came from inside the town. I recognize some of them as sailors, fishermen and whalers. Hmm. So basically men and women who work uh, at the sea. Whether as fishermen, whalers or sailors or something like that. That's an interesting and I believe an important detail. Locals, mostly from old Etran families. Perhaps they belong to one of the lodges. Lodges? Yes, there are long traditions on Etra for the fishermen and sailors to band together in fellowships known as lodgers. From what I understand, they serve mainly as combines for fair distribution of the day's catch. But there are persistent rumors of them serving other purposes too. Rumors? Our order is an imperial one. The locals would be loath to discuss such things with us, but I have always suspected they practiced pre-imperial customs of ocean worship, including offerings to ensure safe travel and bountiful catches. Okay, this sounds very similar to the people of Innsmouth. They were also fishermen, they also worshipped the ocean, or more specifically Daikon, and offered sacrifices to him. Okay, I see what's going on here. I see. Okay, I think it's time to go. Trina or Drina? The game doesn't. <laughs> the game is unable to decide whether her name is Trina or Drina. Anyway, Trina fidgets with a heavy-looking ring on her finger while she listens to a description of Embla. Oh, okay, I read that already. I think I've I read this already. Oh, I. It's time to go. I pressed the wrong wrong key earlier. Let's be off. No, I wonder, is there a place where we can rest? Whose house is this? Can we sleep here? This, the prospect of resting in a proper bed is a rare treat for a mercenary traveling the roads, so you should think twice before passing up on it. Make camp. Okay, so you make camp, assign orders and begin, to, and begin the activities. Break camp when you're ready to leave. The party could use a rest. Okay, um... I guess we just break camp. Wait. Hmm. Well, oh, I see. Okay. Wow, what is this? A foraging character searches for food in the surrounding area. Oh, okay. No activity. Um. Uh, You stay on watch. You too, and then... Actually, uh... Hmm. Forage, forage. All go to foraging. And, uh... Rest. Uh, watch, watch. Rest. Rest. Watch, watch. Watch. Ah, uh, okay. So, then what? Begin activities, okay. One or more characters are missing orders. Assign more activities or break camp. Wait, are we doing this again, or...? Break camp. Hmm. Well, okay. So that's how the camping works. What do we have here? 
That's a sling. A simple leather string used for throwing stone bullets. Uh, okay. By the way, uh, what do you have? A mace and a studded leather. An improved form of leather armor. Studded leather armor is covered with dozens of metal protuberances. And a mace. Mm, okay. Let's go and find our way to Horin. And then I'm gonna end the episode at uh, this video here, I think. So, we just follow the road, right? Mm, when, do we, when do we get to the world map? There we go. Yes, leave the area. That must be Horin. At the end of the rugged peninsula lies the small walled fishing village of Horin. Once home to hundreds, the town now lies seemingly deserted. Whatever fate has befallen this place, you must be on your guard if you choose to enter it. Let's enter it. Enter. And these are dead bodies. A pile of brutally murdered corpses. The gates to Horan loom before you. The massive portcullis is down, however, and there is no way to open it from this side. On the other side you see the dead, piled atop one another, up against the portcullis. They must have died trying to escape the town, caught between the gates and whatever asylums were in the town with them. Trina's face is... Trina's face is ashen. I... I knew these people. I delivered their children and cared for their dead. To see them like this... I will have vengeance. She sets her jaw. There's another way. The fisherman's gate. We we'll follow the walls east and then south. Let's go. So, uh, so east and south. You mean here? The small farmhouse seems desolate and abandoned. The only sign of life is a few grotesquely swollen hogs, feeding greedily on something deep in the mud. When you catch a glimpse through a brief break in the frenzy, you realize it's the corpse of what must have been their former owners. Internal swine, Trina spits behind you. These hogs look like more than a handful. Best be careful lest we all end up with a tusk in the gut, Roland crumbles. Move along quietly. God damn it. Hmm. Trina is there, okay. Let's just defend. Let them come to us. You come here as well, but then again. Hmm. At this at this uh, at this rate Leo Hield won't be able to attack. Oh, we can shift like that, okay. Do you have any spells? Blinding glory? Anything else? Uh, there is... Bless. You add a small bonus to your companion's melee and range stat. Okay. Divine Hammer. You deal an amount of damage from... Uh, from 1 to your percent score to a single target. And we also got heal, obviously. You heal a an amount of light damage for your entire party equal, equal to the caster's presence. So this is an AoE heal, basically. It heals more than just one. Okay, good to know. Let's... Uh, divine Hammer. Let's try to use that. Cost 20. I don't even know that how much mana I have overall. Okay, so how do I... Okay, I just hit the spell. Deals 18 to Felhawk. Okay, nice. Ouch, that hurts. Can't really do much here. Hmm. No valid targets, okay. Just defend them. Okay, uh, Roland is about to go down at this rate. Use the uh, heal. 
does not have enough attunement to the he to cast heal. Well, shit. Mm, defend here. Roland, Roland is about to go down. Can I, uh. Inventory. Drink that. We got some HP back. Can I still attack? Yes, I can. Okay, nice. Oh, shit. Did, did Roland die? Okay, you have defeated your enemies. Each party member gained 198 uh, experience points. We got some tasks, okay. But, okay, Roland is not dead. They don't just die in combat straight away. So where is the Fisherman's Gate, or whatever it was called? This here. The small cluster of cottages li lie silent except for the buzzing of bloated flies feasting on corpses. You jump at the sound of something smashing into pieces inside one of the nearby buildings. I don't think we are alone, Roland whispers with a predatory growl. Of course we're not alone. Of course we're not alone. Also, I kind of want to use the Use this again because I just love I just love this look. I just really love this look for some reason. By the way, can I use spells out of combat? Um, what feats do you have? Divine spellcaster. You gain attunement points and may use them to cast divine spells. Okay. Spells? Can I cast spell? This spell cannot be cast now, okay. So I guess we can use it only on, only in combat. Normally I would go and check out those houses, but I just want to get to the, get inside the city and then end the video there. Hmm, rope. Can we pick it up? Nope, okay. Hmm, here. The gates stand conspicuously open and you step carefully through into the ghost town. As if in greeting, a swarm of vermin pours out of every doorway and crevice towards you, covering the streets in a mangy, skittering carpet. You set your feet, ready to meet the living tide, but the rats part, scurrying past you and out beyond the gates. Sewer rats. So why are they all above ground? And in such a hurry, Roland asks as he stumps on a stray rodent. Trina waits unperturbed into the tide of vermin. Our path leads through this sea of filth onwards. Okay, well we are now inside the city of Horan. By the way, I wonder I wonder if I could save. Yes, I can. Like this. Okay. As you approach the city square, panicked cries of fear, pain and Despair echo across the plaza. Oh great, more of these guys. You move closer and spy a large group of reavers, rounding up and binding villagers. The poor souls are blooded and abused, and the reavers tie them in ranks as though they intend to march them away. Hmm. Let's attack. Steady on, Roland whispers as he grabs your wrist, pulling you back into the shadows. There's plenty more of them than us. Attacking head-on is a poor bet even for me. Wait till they move and we'll take their rear. Might even the odds before they know what's hit them. Hmm. Not in a rush to die anymore, Roland? Well, we'll wait. One of the struggling captives manages to break free. She is swiftly caught and her throat slit for the trouble. The other captives cry out in terror. Laughing, the reavers pull the rest of their feet and make for the opposite side of the square, towards the keep that looms over Horan. We must act now, 
or all will be lost, Trina hisses. Hmm. Okay, attack. You spring stealthily out of hiding, determined to get within killing range before your foes spot you. Your heart pounds in your chest as you prepare to strike the first blow. But a piercing whistling cuts through the silence and stops you dead in your tracks. You whirl around to see another group of six reavers uh, file into the street behind you, cutting you off from your escape route. Well, shit. Elated laughter sounds from the first group as they notice the prey now caught between them and their comrades. The reavers fan out around you, dragging their captives along, with moronic grins and weapons drawn. A hulk of a man steps to the fore, dressed only in ragged trousers and a half hood. His swollen barrel chest is covered in sailor tattoos. He hefts a rusty cleaver and drags a terrified woman behind him by her auburn hair. He smiles serenely as he approaches, revealing a few remaining yellow teeth. You have no idea how glad I am to see you here. There is no scorn or malice in his voice, only genuine joy. You are truly blessed to be a part of this. He slowly, almost tenderly places the knife against the woman's throat as he speaks. Are you the one they call father? The men roar with laughter. I am not, but he is waiting for you. He has so much to show you. We have come to put an end to you. An end? There are no ends here. Only new beginnings. New life. The man's voice rises, speaking as much to the other reavers as to you. We stand at the dawn of a new age, of old masters, reclaiming their rightful thrones, and you will all play your part in ushering it in. The hooded man scowls at Trina. Not all of you, though. Let the villagers go first. You cannot threaten me. All that can change now is just how many vessels father will offer up to her by the day's end. Can't you see? This is your chance to be part of something so much bigger than yourself. You're all insane. The man's breathing deepens in perverse delight as he pulls his hostage's head back by her long auburn hair. A thousand young will heed her call. He places the knife across the woman's throat. A thousand young will hear her call. Is he talking about Sub Nikurat, the mother of a thousand young? Sure sounds like it. Die! Okay. Oh, and... Okay, so that's where this uh, prologue ends. Okay, I was not expecting to actually uh, get to the end of the prologue here, because I was not sure that how long this was going to be. But anyway, thank you for playing. That was all for now, but more is on the way. If you really want to play more, try loading the autosave. Okay. Stay posted at scaldrpg.com. That was Scald, ladies and gentlemen, and I really liked it. I like the old school pixelated graphics. I find the story very intriguing so far, very Lovecraftian. So this town of Horon is basically like Innsmouth, and these crazed fishermen and sailors seem to be worshipping someone who sounded very much like Sub Nikovath. And you know how much I love Lovecraftian stuff. The combat also felt uh, quite satisfying. Surprisingly satisfying actually, considering how the game looks. And once again folks, if you want to try out this prologue yourself, you can go and download it for free on Steam. And as far as I know, there is no official release date for the full game, but it's supposed to come out at some point this year, 2022, hopefully. But anyway, it's time to end this video here. Thank you for watching my Let's Check Out video of Skald against the Black Priory, the prologue, and see you in the next video.